My name is Scott Slesky. I'm an assistant professor here in the School of Meteorology. Currently this fall, I'm teaching Meteorology 1111 Orientation to Professional Meteorology, which is a one credit introductory course for incoming students who are planning to major in meteorology. Um, so we bring in guest speakers from a number of different disciplines to give them some ideas of potential career opportunities in the meteorology field. And then we also cover uh, different concepts in meteorology so they can get used to um, using some of these tools, looking at atmospheric soundings, weather maps, so they can start to um, say something about the weather they see on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm originally from Michigan, and I did my bachelor's degree in science education at Martin Luther College, a very small um, college in South Central Minnesota. While I was there, I took a meteorology class my junior year, and actually, um, the professor that taught it was a former polar researcher. So it was really fascinating the way he taught the class um, and just applying um, mathematics and physics to atmospheric phenomena. So that really got me interested. And after I graduated, I had originally intended to be a science teacher, but I decided I was interested in maybe doing research. So I decided to go to graduate school. So I went to Penn State University for both my master's and for my PhD, um, where my research focused on understanding turbulence in the atmospheric boundary layer, uh, the lowest one to two kilometers of the atmosphere that are really directly impacted by Earth's surface. And once I graduated there with a PhD, I went up to Vancouver, British Columbia, and I did a postdoc at the University of British Columbia um, for three years. So I came from Vancouver here to OU. So I think what really fascinates me about meteorology is that it's really applying physics to the atmosphere and to things around us. And what got me interested in the atmospheric boundary layer in particular is that it's a part of the atmosphere that we live in. So, so many things happen in the boundary layer that are important for for weather and for climate, for hydrology, and also for human health. Um, so we really need to be able to understand turbulent transport to understand um, exchange of greenhouse gases, evaporation, questions in hydrology, and air quality, and health in urban areas. In my research, I focus on turbulence in the atmospheric boundary layer, and I'm interested in a few things in particular. Uh, so first of all, is just understanding the physics and dynamics of, of turbulent transport in the lower atmosphere. Um, so I do some work with analytical techniques, some work with experimental observations, going out into the field and collecting in situ atmospheric data, as well as some numerical modeling work. Um, we do simulations of turbulence and we also do some of our own development of new simulation tools uh, so we can better understand its physics. Um, a second area of research that I'm very interested in is understanding what happens in turbulence in complex terrain and really non-idealized settings. So a lot of research that the community has done over the last several decades has focused on the atmospheric boundary layer over flat, horizontally homogeneous terrain, um, and we have good techniques to understand these sorts of boundary layers, but very often we're dealing with something in an urban area with a lot of buildings or a forest canopy or um, maybe mountainous or hilly terrain, and there are traditional techniques don't always work as well. Um, so I'm very interested in understanding the physics in these different sorts of settings and developing tools to uh, study these research problems and understand them better. A third area I'm interested in is the transport of, of particles and turbulent flows. Um, so what happens when you have things like ice particles or cloud droplets uh, or when you have blowing snow or dust? And this is a very interesting problem both in terms of the physics and of course it has a number of implications for environmental problems.